major masses, the largest forms on the human figure. If you can really get a strong understanding of how the major masses are structured in relation to each other, you'll have a much easier time placing everything else. The head, the rib cage, the pelvis. The pelvis and the rib cage, they're a little bit tricky because I think people do tend to lump them together. The mistake that a lot of people make is not distinguishing the rib cage from the pelvis clearly enough. We also have the thighs. If you do a really good job of setting up the major masses, it almost doesn't matter what you do with everything else. You have to be able to see the simple basic shapes first. See past details. You have to think about the angle of the major masses as opposed to the shape. If I were to say to you, okay, do a sketch of this, this is what most people would do. The more important thing about these masses is the angles. What is the angle of the head? What is the tilt of the rib cage? There's so many just bad charts. A lot of them have nothing to do with the anatomy. It's not sausages. It's also not toothpicks. For some reason, there are circles in the shoulders, in the joints. None of those joints look like that. I am not into these shape systems because I think it gets you to imagine things that just aren't there. And if you're looking for these circles in the shoulders, you're not going to find them because they don't exist. It's not this either. This looks like some bad 80s music videos. The human figure, it's not a stack of blocks. You're actually not that straight at all. There's actually a lot of angles. The head pretty much sits up straight. The neck actually tilts forward. The rib cage tilts forward. And then the pelvis actually tilts back. The thighs tilt back. You have to be really attuned to those angles. It's not actually until you get to the lower leg that things get straight again. So actually there's very few things on the figure that really do sit upright and straight. Everything has like a slight tilt to it. If we just take away Christian, don't worry, he'll come back. This is not straight at all. You're not just looking at the major masses by themselves. You're trying to say, how are they angled in relation to each other? You're drawing the rib cage in relation to the pelvis. People tend to isolate individual parts and that's where they get into trouble because they're not relating all the different parts to each other. It is just one form. If you look at the orientation of the ear and the ear is sitting upright like that, you can assume that the head is doing the same thing. The neck tilts forward. You don't think it's a big deal until, like, this is really upsetting. Like, doesn't this look so stiff and horrible? Ah, that looks a lot better. You have the head sitting upright, the neck tilts forward. Look at the nose to find the angle of the head. Look at the relationship between the head to the rib cage. The thighs in a natural standing position, they're not straight up and down. If the belly is coming forward for the thighs to actually support the structure of the figure, they would have to tilt back. If one part of the figure is angled, another part has to be angled almost in the opposite way to offset the weight distribution. And it's not until you get to the lower leg that things actually straighten out again. You have to exaggerate the angles. You look at the angle of the neck, the tilt of the rib cage, which in this case, because it's a very large figure, he's got like a pot belly shape. Anywhere you can see yourself really pushing that as far as you can, definitely do that. Because the pot belly comes out so far, the tilt of the pelvis becomes even more visible. When you see those angles, you make them more dramatic than you actually think they are. Whatever amount of angle you think there should be, add more, and then I think it will probably get a lot closer to what you actually want it to be.